I hope you had a beautiful All Hallows Eve, All Hallows Day, or All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. I celebrated um, these feast days uh, very thoroughly with friends and family, and I enjoyed it so much. But in the Catholic faith, the month of November is actually dedicated to all souls who have passed, to all of the departed, those who we know are in heaven, you know, that we remembered on All Saints Day, which was the 1st of November, as well as those who have passed that we are not sure are in heaven and who we pray that are in heaven. And we remembered them on the 2nd of November on All Souls Day. I prayed a beautiful special rosary with friends on All Souls Day for those who I have known personally, you know, in my family who have passed. And after All Souls Day, uh, which is the 2nd of November, the 3rd of November, I remembered St. Martin de Porres. His feast day and the day that he passed was November 3rd, and he was born on December 9th, which is coming up. And as I said, you know, this whole month, we Catholics remember all who have gone before us. And in addition to my loved ones who have passed, I have been thinking about St. Martin de Porres. St. Martin de Porres was born December 9th in Lima, Peru. My husband is Peruvian and he has corrected me that his name is San Martin de Porres. The double R is just not natural to me. I'm American, so sorry, that's just how I say his name. Anyway, St. Martin is the patron saint of mixed race people, innkeepers, barbers, public health workers, and he was the first black saint of the Americas. And I really, I don't know, just love to read about St. Martin because I am of mixed race. And although he experienced such intense discrimination during his life, because he was born in 1579 when, you know, racism was so much worse uh, than it is today, um, I still just love to read about how he handled that racism so well because I don't handle it as well and I don't even have to deal with that level of racism that he dealt with. You know, racism today is delivered with a smile and a handshake, you know, oh, sorry, we can't help you today, you know, when really they could, you know, discrimination is very covert in our world today, at least in the U.S. It's more out in the open in other parts of the world, unfortunately. Anyway, that's one of the reasons that I really love to read about St. Martin and also his love for animals. He loved animals. And it makes me really sad in some Catholic circles, um, there is this... I don't know what the correct word is, but in some Catholic circles, there's like a disrespect for animals. And I know, you know, human rights, of course, are above animal rights. You know, we humans have dominion over the animals, but they are still creatures of God and they deserve our respect. So I love to read about the saints that loved and respected animals, and St. Martin was one of them. Okay, so St. Martin de Porres, born in Lima, Peru, he was the illegitimate son of a freed slave from Panama. So his mother was either of Indian or African descent, and she was a slave, and she was freed. And his father was a nobleman from Spain, and after his little sister was born, his father abandoned both him and his sister and his mom. Because his father left him, he grew up in extreme poverty and he was, you know, responsible for the family at times. You know, his mom would send him out, um, you know, to buy bread or whatever. And he would often give away his money or his food to the poor. And he would be punished by his mother, you know, because she's trying to care for her family. But that just shows his character right there from a young age when he had nothing. He wanted to give what little he had, what little loaf of bread he had to the poor. So he grew up in poverty and after just two years of school, 
he worked for a man who was a barber as well as a surgeon. And it's funny that he's the patron saint of barbers. I'm not a barber or a professional hairdresser, but I just posted on how to trim your own curly hair, so I just thought that was funny. Anyway, Saint Martin, because of his mixed race, was ridiculed by everyone for his mixed race. And the law at the time was descendants of Africans or Indians, which his mother was, could not become full members of religious orders. So everyone was racist, even the Catholics. That just breaks my heart. So this law was in place, but St. Martin didn't even feel worthy to be a full member of the religious order. You know, unlike me, who would be so angry. What does it matter who my parents were? I am not my parents. What does it matter that I'm of mixed race? That doesn't make me less of a person than anybody else. You know, I would be furious if I lived in this time with this law, but he didn't even feel worthy to be a full member of a religious order. And so he offered to volunteer uh, for the Dominicans and he was accepted by the Dominicans to work as a volunteer and that is where he ended up living. He lived at the Dominican of the Holy Rosary Priory. And I shared about this in my St. Rose of Lima video, but I was so blessed to be able to visit this priory and I was able to see his room and where he worked. I loved his room. They had um, rats in the room, not real rats, but to help you understand how much he loved animals. like he would let animals live in his little room with him, even rats. I love animals so much, but I confess I don't really like rats and I would not let rats in my home, but St. Martin did and he cared for rats, for sick rats and fed them. So St. Martin served as a volunteer and then after some time he became a servant boy and then he was put in charge of distributing money to the poor. And then some years later, the Dominicans disregarded the law that people of mixed race could not join religious orders and St. Martin was allowed to take his vows as a third order Dominican. Even though he did become a third order Dominican, he was still mocked for first of all being an Ill illegitimate child and for being a descendant of a slave and for being of mixed race. And he was mocked by everyone, even the religious, even the Dominicans that he was living with. That just breaks my heart. You know, I am a mixed race person and I see discrimination in my world today. It is very covert, as I mentioned earlier, but I couldn't imagine living with people uh, who would mock me for things that I can't control, my race, and you know, my parents' sins. They're, your parents' sins aren't your own sins. Anyway, St. Martin became a lay brother and he was given uh, a religious habit and he was assigned to the infirmary where he was in charge and he patiently cared for the sick and he cared for everyone. It didn't matter if you were a nobleman or if you were a poor person living off of the street, or if you were an animal, if you were a dog, a cat, or a rat, he cared for you. He cared for everyone, and he also founded an orphanage uh, for children, and he also helped raise dowries for young girls who didn't have dowries. I also know when the Dominican Order was going through some financial struggles, St. Martin would offer himself. He would say, I'm a poor mulatto, sell me. A mulatto is a term for a mixed race person. So he was willing to give his life for his religious order. That included people that mocked him. So he was just such a holy man. So I hope I explained his character well. He was such a holy, loving and charitable man and had a deep love for God and love for his neighbor, even when his neighbor was mistreating him and mocking him. So he is actually known for levitating, for by location, instant cures when he was caring 
for people, miraculous and spiritual knowledge, and he loved animals. He was friends with both St. Rose of Lima. If you want to learn more about her, check out my video that I made about her, as well as St. Juan Macias. He died at age 60 and 25 years later after his death, when his body was exhumed, a beautiful fragrance was smelled and his body was intact. So as I mentioned, I was so lucky to go to this priory and see where St. Martin worked and lived. And I actually got to go into this chapel where he would often pray and where he was seen levitating in prayer. He was so deep in prayer that he didn't know that he was levitating and a priest walked by and saw him levitating. So I got to go to that spot where he levitated in prayer and there were a lot of beautiful paintings of him in that spot praying in the air. And I also got to see this staircase that apparently he was walking by and he heard the devil's voice and Satan told him, Martin, you're so great. You're amazing. You're better than God even. And you know, it was the devil using that sin of pride, trying to get St. Martin to just fall into that sin of pride and think, yeah, I am so great. I levitate, I bilocate. But St. Martin only did those things because of his devotion and love for God. And so God blessed him with these abilities that brought other people to God and to love God. And these stories still help people come to God today. Anyway, I got to see those stairs. I'm so glad that I got to see those stairs. It was just cool to be walking around these halls and rooms that St. Martin lived and worked in. And if you ever go there, definitely get a tour. There are tours going on all the time. It's definitely worth it to get a tour because, you know, I wouldn't have learned that about those stairs uh, if I didn't have a tour guide. I believe they were called the Stairs of Temptation. So St. Martin was so charitable and holy and loving. He was actually chastised for caring for the ill when he was told not to, you know, in cases um, where there was a plague, you know, something super contagious. And, you know, the Dominicans were told, you know, we can't help these certain people with their illnesses, but St. Martin helped everyone. It didn't matter, you know, who you were or what illness you had, he would care for you. And he would bring people into his own bedroom. You know, if someone had something super contagious, I would, you know, quarantine them in a separate area, but he would bring these people right into his bedroom. Anyway, when he was chastised by his superior for treating someone super contagious, he said, please forgive me for I did not know that the precept of obedience took precedence over that of charity. What a beautiful response. The religious have a duty to be obedient to their superiors, but they also have a duty to be charitable. So he kindly responded, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the hierarchy there. And when he responded that way, his superior let him go and let him do as he pleased, let him treat whoever he wanted because he responded so well to that criticism. You know, I would not respond that well, I'd probably be angry and say, oh my goodness, I'm trying to help these people and you're criticizing me. You know, he was just such a holy, holy man. Last few things I wanna share about St. Martin are the amazing miracles attributed to him, which, um, you know, facilitated his canonization. So now he is St. Martin. So in 1948, there was an elderly Paraguayan woman and she had a heart attack and she had severe blockage in her intestines and she was 87 years old. So, and this is in 1948. So the doctors, you know, didn't have anything to do for her really. And so this woman's daughter with her friends prayed for her, you know, 
pretty much all night and I believe, you know, the daughter couldn't fall asleep and she woke up at 2 or 3 a.m. and just prayed and prayed for the intercession of St. Martin. And this elderly Paraguayan woman was miraculously healed and the doctors could not explain it. They were shocked and an atheist doctor who was firmly atheist, you know, did not believe after this miraculous healing, he converted, he converted to Catholicism. The next miracle was in 1956, Antonio Cabrera Perez Camacho um, was playing around with his friends and a 60 pound cement block fell on him and crushed his leg. It was so bad he didn't have any circulation in his leg. He had gangrene and the doctors were just like pulling off rotten flesh off of his leg and they were treating him, trying to save his leg, but the doctor said, there's nothing we can do. We're going to have to amputate your leg. So they scheduled that surgery for the next day to amputate his leg and a family friend or a relative, I'm not sure, because you know, in Peruvian culture, um, a lot of people will say, oh, this is my relative, and you find out it's just their friend who they've known for years and years. Like my husband does that. He's like, oh, it's my cousin, and, and they're not cousins. Anyway, so a family friend or a relative came by to visit him in the hospital, and he brought St. Martin's holy card, and it was a third-class relic. So it was touched to something... Uh, belonging to St. Martin. And Antonio's mother prayed with that holy card on his leg all night long. She was a devout Catholic and miraculously his leg was healed the next day and the doctors were shocked and he didn't have to have his leg amputated and so this boy was able to grow up and have a normal life and play soccer and all of that. So there were many, many miracles throughout St. Martin's lifetime, many miraculous cures and healings, not through St. Martin's power, but through God's power. God works through people, especially to convert hearts and to bring people to God and to his church. So many healings happened during St. Martin's lifetime, but these are the main two uh, that happened after his lifetime that were used for cause for his canonization. So I hope you enjoyed remembering St. Martin de Porres with me today. As I mentioned, all of November is a month when we remember all of the souls who have departed. So that is why I'm especially thinking of him this month. And December 9th, as I said, is his birthday. So you could cook like a Peruvian dish and, you know, teach your family about St. Martin de Porres. That would be a really cool thing for you to do. You could also talk about the sin of racism, which is still present in our world today, as well as, you know, the respect of animals. I love that St. Martin de Porres cared for animals. It just warms my heart. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a beautiful day. I'm sorry I've been failing at YouTube a little bit. I'm going to explain that soon in another video, but thanks for tuning into my channel and I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day. God bless you. Bye.